So hello and welcome to this latest edition of the Books Crypto Club catch up on Zoom. Uh, this is a meeting we have every week where we talk about blockchain, crypto, DeFi, NFTs, whatever really. So I hope you enjoy this. Uh, do remember to click on the subscribe button or click on the like and make comments on YouTube as well. That's always really good. The session is really free form. It depends upon who comes along to the meetings as to what we end up talking about. Hopefully you'll find something of interest in this week's session and do come along and join us in future ones. As I say, we hold these every Sunday evening. So you can find the details uh, in the link below. So let's see who's going to come and join us today. Um, I mean, I started in 2017. So um, I have, I won't say I'm expert, but I have some idea. Okay. A little bit. Enough okay. to get around. <laughs> that, 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 that's good. And, and do you trade in crypto or just uh, save or just have a general interest? Um, <clears throat> mainly save. Uh, I did a bit of trading. Um, it's hard. Yeah. Unless, you know, unless you're on top of it 24 7, it can be very challenging. And but um, uh, lately, no, I've just uh, just found it in a couple of months, a couple of months back before the Elon Musk fad, and I'm just hodling now. Okay. Yeah, Elon Musk used to be my hero. Uh, <laughs> I, 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 I love the stuff he's been doing with Tesla. I love the stuff he's been doing with SpaceX. But I'm he's just, still, I'm... he's, I still respect him. I mean, he, what he's doing is quite revolutionary compared to anyone else so uh, I have respect for him okay but I think it's just the way he goes about especially uh, FOMOing into Dogecoin and then going to SNL and making <clears throat> making everyone uh, FOMO into Dogecoin and everything get dumped so I don't think it's the right way to go about yeah uh, I, I agree and that, that, that's where I find it quite strange because he's always seemed to have been very intelligent and sensible in his thinking about things. And for him to then suddenly present something or support something like that does seem quite bizarre. Especially without not having a full understanding of the whole crypto industry. Um, but yeah, in a way, I suppose he has made a difference because if he wasn't then, it would have been later on in the future where all the whole fight about fossil fuel energy for mining and all that will come up, come about anyway. Yep. So I'd rather get it, get it over with now and not affect in the future. Yeah. Yeah. I guess that's fair. It's, it's funny. You were saying you've been into this since 2017, which makes you, a fairly seasoned veteran in, in some ways in this space but for a lot of people you know that they are quite new to this um and i, I think you're right that it, maybe it's better to get all this food and everything out of the way with now um so maybe if it must get over his hyping type phase and we can get back to it being a bit more realistic with things but we should we shall see mm. yeah we've, we've got um fazal's desperately trying to join us here he sometimes has connection problems for some reason he, he's usually quite good because he takes an interest in the markets as well who's that um fazal yeah, we, we, yeah we... he's the one who invited me so i'm surprised i don't know where he is okay well it, i keep getting join requests every few minutes so i don't know if he's having connection problems or something but yeah he, he usually joins us with a few others um i don't know where everyone is tonight it's um, remember it's a good weather today so that, that that's a good point so I, I keep i keep forgetting when it's good weather people like to enjoy it here yeah mm. so how long have you been how long have you been around so i've i've been interested in the crypto space and well originally blockchain since about 2014 2015 oh, okay um, got got more and more into the blockchain side of things consciously avoided crypto for a year or so uh, I, I was more interested in the technology underpinning it so distributed ledger blockchain all this kind of stuff and then eventually ended up getting a, a little bit into crypto anyway because uh, there's no escape no um 
and then once I got into it, yeah, I got, got more and more into it. So whilst I brand myself as an emerging technology consultant, so I actually do education and advisory and consultancy work around blockchain that mm -hmm. has blended into uh, talking to companies about cryptocurrencies, uh, digital assets, tokens, and all this kind of stuff as well. And how are you, how are you finding um, the reaction? Are they, are they cautious? Are they... Um... Yeah, the, the, yeah the, the, the typical thing is for, for businesses who want to understand about blockchain and distributed ledger technology, they're either they, they don't know anything and they know they don't know anything. So the great thing about me educating them is that I can help them understand how technology works and what the benefits are. Some of them get um, blockchain and Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies all mixed up. So they think it's all you know, criminals and money laundering and this kind of thing. Um, and some of them just got a gen general interest. So they're gradually getting into it. Oh, but the, the, the blockchain space is still quite slow moving. There are, there, there are now live projects. I, I've been an advisor on a couple of projects as well. So they're kind of getting there bit by bit, but it is a slow, painful process. It, it, it's yeah. always getting them into it. Um, but but it'll, it'll get there. Hey, it looks like Fazal is actually getting through this time. This, this is great. <laughs> Hi, sorry, I, I managed it this time. <laughs> uh, I, 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 was, uh, I, was, I was just saying to Maz that you know, I've been watching the connection join requests every few minutes. I try and join on my phone, but it keeps when I join, it kicks me out. So I'm on my laptop now. So, ah, okay, uh, yeah, it's bizarre because you, you seem to quite often have connection problems. Um, I don't know why that is. It, it, it asks for my name, and then when I click on join, it's saying joining, and then it it just throws me back out. Okay. So I just I've just gone on my laptop instead. Uh, I'm just I'm just using the mobile phone. Oh, does it, oh, does it work, Mas? The... Mobile phone, yeah, yeah. Okay. How how strange. I I, I know sometimes if I want to run a test with Zoom, I'll um, set the meeting up on my laptop. And then I'll call in on my mobile phone just to make sure everything works. So anyway, <laughs> such is the wonderful thing. We're talking about cryptos and blockchains and that, and we can't even get mobile phones and Zoom to work. <laughs> Give me one second. <laughs> so Vizal, what, what, what's new in the world crypto-wise? Anything exciting you're watching? At um, no, I mean, I, I'm, just, I'm just getting back recovering from COVID. So I've been a bit... Um, out of the market for about a week or two. Okay. Uh, I've been quite ill, but um, Maz knows, isn't it? Where are you yourself, Gary? Say again, sorry? Where are you yourself? So uh, I live in Marlow in Buckinghamshire. So okay. About 60 kilometres, 70 kilometres west of London or something. And in fact, or originally this group was actually set up. Um, we used to meet physically in Starbucks in Marlow. Yeah. Um, because that's where I used to go for a cup of coffee. So a group of us got together and we grew it from there. And then when the lockdown kicked in, I gradually took this on to Zoom and yeah. then just realized there's no point having it geographic anymore. So that's why it's called the Books Crypto Club. It's not books as in big books money. <laughs> that's <laughs> what I thought originally, <laughs> Gary. <laughs> yeah, but, but I, I, I kept, kept, kept it with that. that. That's okay. It's quite a nice uh, thing to go with. So yeah, so I've, I've opened it up a little bit more. Um, I occasionally promote it via Facebook or Meetup or WhatsApp or Telegram because I run a number of other groups. Um, I run various crypto groups and blockchain groups and that kind of thing as well. So I, I just use it to um, get people to have a conversation sometimes. Hey, and we've got Sam's coming in and joined us as well. Hey there, Sam. No. Oh, he's, he's nearly there. It says connecting to all. <laughs> yeah. you know. So I've just been re recovering, Gary. With the, oh, yeah. Okay, well, yeah. so good, good, good to hear that you're on, on the road to recovery. On the road, yeah. Recovery. I had it yeah. pretty bad, actually. I didn't think it was that bad until you, you catch this. Yeah. So, um, the, yeah. The one, the, one, the one thing I found, because I, I went through the process <laughs> myself, is I, I found it weird to lose my sense of smell and taste. Yeah. Yes, that, that was really strange. I, I'm still getting it. I, I'm still 
not seventy percent of it lost, but it's slowly coming back. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, good, good, good to hear you getting there. Yeah. It's certainly what, what once you get your sense of taste back, then you know you're you're, you're back. Yeah. Normal, so that's good. So. so, talking of taste, we've got Sam's joined us. Hello. Hello. Good evening. Hello. Nice to see you. I'm I'm sorry you've had the COVID. I had it as well. It took me about a week yeah. to get through it. It took me one. Oh, week. that's not bad. A week. That's that's pretty good then. It's good. I, I took a lot of vitamin D beforehand. Mm. And yeah, that's during... a lot of it. Yeah. So I found that was well. I think it's pretty effective. All the medical research shows shows that. So that was um, how I kind of uh, addressed it. But, yeah, good, good to hear everyone who's on the call <laughs> is um, in a reasonable state nowadays, at least. Maybe we should rename this the books COVID call <laughs> instead of the books crypto call. That'd be good. So, Sam, anything new in the crypto world you've been watching oh, this week? You know what? I'm just obsessed with this 50k. Bitcoin. Bitcoin, yeah. yeah it's, it's, it seems to be just hovering around that. It's, it's because it's um it's the golden pocket. So I was watching my good old friend Satoshi, <laughs> who's a he's a day trader, and he's described this area of resistance as it's the golden pocket of resistance on the Fibonacci's. Okay. Mm. So <clears throat> once we get past this. Um, I, I thought we were going to pass the other day because there was like something like $450 million of liquidations and I thought there'd be a, a short squeeze. But the thing is, you know what? The stronger the resistance, the bigger the pump when you go through, right? It's generally the, uh, the way I think about things. So maybe maybe we'll get through it tonight. We're going to get through it. Some, the momentum's too big. There's looking at like on-chain analysis and the amount of, um, the amount of Bitcoin that is going off exchanges. Mm -hmm. The expectation is that we'll break, you know, we're going to break it through eventually. Could be, you know, it could be tomorrow. But Certainly this time. Me, they, they say that's a sign, isn't it, Sam? That the less Bitcoin in exchanges, that's kind of telling you that it's going to become more scarce. Well, exactly. exactly. Well, the, the more scarce it gets, and then there won't be any to sell anymore. So the bears will be oversold at some point. You know, you can't keep on selling if uh, those people who are buying are taking it off exchanges. So eventually, and when I say eventually, I foresee within... I don't know, three or four days, really, I'd expect to uh, to break through. You know, the things, and you can, you can happen at any time. You can wake up and, oh, we've broke. And we've got to, like, 51, like, numerous times now, and then it just seems to go back down. I don't know if the hedge funds are waiting to see if the FOMO is um, is getting bigger. But whilst Bitcoin's hovering, all the altcoins, seems like there's some, been some major growth on, on altcoins, some silly growth, really. Like Matic's doing quite well recently. So, I don't know. We seem to be in a bullish point of the market. But I just really want to see... Bit when Bitcoin gets to 60K, that's going to be a very good day. Mm. <laughs> from, from my personal experience, uh, mm. what I noticed is whenever it is a round number, mm. a lot of people in their head, they, they've set their targets. Mm. Oh, yeah, when it's 50 or when it's 60... I'll sell. So yeah. I think this, this is the phase we're going through at the moment. Mm. A lot of people taking profit. Yeah. Um, that... I'm, I'm just hoping all these people, if, once they decided to sell, sell, and then there will be the next pump coming along. Because mm. we, did, we did hit 50K a couple of times already. Yeah. Actually. Well, it's, it's odd as well. You, you mentioned the round numbers, because I think you're absolutely right on that which is bizarre when you think how much is automated trading. Automated mm. trading should not look at round numbers. It, mm. it, should, it should look at rates and percentages and, and fractional type thing, really. But unless, unless someone has actually coded the algorithm to say when it's a round number, then behave a little bit differently. Mm. So, yeah, I, th I think that's fair, fair enough. Um, but, yeah, I've got the chart up at the moment. I was just trying to check to see if you can actually you guys can actually see it at the moment. Um, but you can see it's kind of going up and down a little bit over the last few days. If you take a look on, um, if I pull that down to the one hour chart, there's definitely a, a, a upline there right now, which is mm. quite encouraging. Um, yeah. And as you say, it almost hit 61 the other day. Oh, sorry, 51 the other day. Yeah. And it, it does look like it's, working its way up so we we should we should there's, say there's, there's, no, 
there's a nice neckline there appearing anyway. Um, it, you know, he can't, he can't hover there forever, and I'd expect to move upwards rather than downwards. I don't, you know, depends on your thesis of the bull market. Some people think it's only to the end of September. Now, if a lot of people believe that, they're going to think, right, I better get by it and, like, make my last buys. So can, and then the market will just, like, go parabolic, like, this month. So with people, some people thinking the end of September is the end of the bull market, and, you know, some people say end of December, but, you know, the truth is just no one knows, do they? Yeah. But it's, it's, it's coming. Time is running well, out. Time is not on our at, side. <laughs> no, but if you, yeah. look at the last, if you look at the last cycle, um, September was a quiet month. Well, yeah. Last, last yeah, September. I so, I mean, to be honest, a lot of people say, oh, you know, they compare from the last cycle to this cycle. Me personally, um, I don't put too much weight on it because this cycle we got a lot more institutional buyers jumped in compared to mm. the last time. So I don't really think we're going to follow the traditional trend from the past history, same mm. as what we did in the past. Um, mm. See, a lot I, of I, I, I still think that the, the whole crypto market is still so immature that where people keep talking about, oh, last year or, or whatever. I mean, I've just pulled up the chart now on the, the one week for Bitcoin. And if you look at where it was, as you say, in September of 2020, the, the, it was a different market. You know, mm. the, the, this was when it was still around the, the $11,000 mark. So it, it's gone up, you know, fivefold um, since then. Mm. Uh, so yeah, I, I'm still I'm still not convinced as to whether the market now is truly comparable to last year. Um, the, the volumes are certainly there. Uh, the, the volumes look like they're quite similar, but the prices it is just changing. And I think gradually over time, the marketplace, the p participants, um, is maturing in some ways. I, I think there's some new players coming in and maybe that's having a difference. We'll, we'll, we'll see anyway. Hmm. Yeah. I don't like... When, when I watch Satoshi and he gets up the previous um, bull runs, he did say that September can be a quiet month, but then... I don't know. It's just like... This, it's just, that's a really weird reason for the Bitcoin price not to go up. Just because, like... Because, like, you can't compare every September to every September because some Septembers have been bear markets because, yeah. you know, the Bitcoin super cycles are 3.9 years. So, you know, it's not going to be strictly comparable, is it? <laughs> like, <laughs> like depending on, on which, which end of a cycle you, you're in. But um, I do know a lot of traders do set store by time, first quarter, second quarter, third quarter. You know, we, we've, we've got into the fourth quarter of this year. We're in quarter four in September. I know that um, traders do do give a lot of significance to these time periods and even yep. days of the week, Monday, Tuesday, like Monday to Friday and the times of the day and with, with trading. So I know I know that, that, that that's all, you know, even if it shouldn't be important, it can be, you know, I don't know. Sometimes you overthink the market and sometimes you just got to think maybe a bit more simply. It's a very hard thing to... Uh, you know, if, if everyone knew the answers, we would be being as wouldn't we? So, so. <laughs> uh, that is certainly a, a very good point. So, I mean, it's, it's I always find it funny how the the only thing that you can actually correlate Bitcoin prices to is that when the price goes up, there are more and more experts out there who are telling you mm. about how good they are at being experts. <laughs> <laughs> so it's fair. But it's interesting as well that I mean, we're, we're talking about Bitcoin in particular and. It, it seems to be hovering around this 50 mark and it just doesn't want to break through 51. I thought it was interesting as well. We take a look at um, Ethereum mm. and by way of comparison with that, um, the, uh, let's see if I can just pull that up. And it seems to be following quite a similar trend, um, which is no surprise that I, I always say that there's still a degree of correlation between the, the various altcoins and, and Bitcoin. Mm. But, but I, was, I was looking at it earlier and it, it does seem very closely correlated at the moment to the Bitcoin price. So I, I think the whole market is just mo moving in that way at the moment. So we'll, we'll see the way that goes. Um, but again, that, that's um, 
seems to be hovering around this kind of market at the moment where it's almost hitting four thousand mm. dollars. And what's going to be really interesting is when it break when it breaks four thousand because its its highest was previously like four one eight five or four one eighty. Um, once it breaks through four, will it accelerate further? Is it a bit like a gas balloon where it'll suddenly kind of take off? Um, or will it just hang around 4,000 again? So uh, another interesting to w- one to watch out because you, know, you, you could almost, I've I, I pulled up the one week charts there. They look for Ethereum just like the Bitcoin charts one week. Mm. Like they, they, they behave very similarly. So we'll, we'll, we'll see anyway. Anyone else got any other predictions or thoughts around the prices at the moment? If only we knew. Yeah. The, um, the, the, the other one, I guess, then, that might, might as well raise it, uh, is Ripple, mm. which I always think is worth keeping an eye on. I do have some in Ripple. Um, it's predicted it'll go to two dollars once uh, once Bitcoin goes to uh, sixty, which is a twenty percent increase. <clears throat> Ripple, you know, from there, that's like a what, like a sixty sixty percent increase for Ripple. You know, it'll okay. be a big big increase. So my, I have got some in Ripple, but um, Fernando always really puts me off. <laughs> <laughs> well, he look, really puts me off. It. I, I I like Ripple simply because having some annoys the crypto purists. <laughs> so it, it, it's almost the opposite of having bragging rights kind of thing. Um, but I, I, I find Ripple quite en- entertaining um, in, in that it, it does just annoy some people, the, the very existence of it. But I, f- I found again, you know, we've got the, the Ripple price up there and it's hovering around like the 128 mark at the moment. Um, I guess the ultimate thing is going to be the court decision with the, with the SEC. Yeah. yeah. Um, but again, it's it's whether that's going to lead to the price going up or, you know, the, the theory with prices is what is it, buy on the rumour, sell on the news. Mm. So it's already got a kind of market price built into it in some way. Um, but we'll see where that goes. I saw Alessio Rastani. You do you know him? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he, he made a video about XRP and he says that we're in the fifth wave of it and we should be seeing parabolic gains. His prediction is five dollars as an end price. So um you know, maybe that'll be the end of December. He doesn't know, but he thinks it will finish on five dollars regardless of the court case. And he says he's not interested in the court case. He's just interested in the technicals of price action. Okay. So he, he thinks regardless of win or lose, is XRP to five dollars. So. I know he's interesting because he like every, you know, he seems to you know with Alessio he doesn't think like many people but maybe that's why he's been so successful because you know what is the market the market is driven by herd thinking and you've got to beat the herd right you have to think differently to everyone else that's how you make your money you know that's how you win you, know, you win by being completely different to everyone else don't you so maybe that's why is is he going for the counterintuitive type thing then of a counter market principle? Um, <clears throat> I think I wouldn't say. Yeah, maybe maybe it is counter market, but just like when I watch him, he just says things which I want, which I don't expect quite often. I wouldn't. I'd, maybe I'll, you'd be expecting someone else like because everyone's saying how important the court case is, and then for him just to completely disregard it, I was very surprised. I was like, wow, I, you know, well, how can you not? care about the care about the court case why would that not be important but for him he's massively into technical analysis and he's just he's saying like he, he says like there's a 74 percent probability or something like on the technicals that will go to five dollars as long as we stay over i think it was like i have to bring up the video but i think it was like 85 cents as long as xrp stays over 85 cents for the next like blah blah amount of time we will be getting to five dollars and there's a very high percentage chance of that happening Okay, so I just pulled up a, a chart now. I don't know if you can see it or not, mm. which is um, Ripple, Bitcoin, and Ethereum. Mm. And I just thought it was interesting to look at all three of them 
And this is where it comes back to what I keep saying to people about the crypto market being irrational and pseudo correlated and this kind of thing. R Ripple's got a totally different use case to yeah. Bitcoin. Bitcoin's got a different use case to Ethereum. Yeah. All, all three prices are broadly speaking, you know, all, all trending in the same kind of directions. They're all going up at the same time, down at the same time. Yeah. So maybe he's right that um, Ripple will just behave the way it does irrespective of what happens with the court case because it's tr it's more closely correlated with the crypto market than it is with the court action who, kn mm -hmm. who knows indeed who does know i mean i've been what i've been doing i've been chasing the pumps and that worked out okay not chasing the pumps Chase like so once one coin is pumped then making a trade and putting it into a coin that hasn't pumped yeah i did that i did that with dot last week i noticed that dot hadn't pumped so I took some some Cardano, um, which I've been a major bullish fan of, and I took some and I just put like half my Cardano into um, Dot, and then it pumped by like ten percent, like two days in a row, like ten percent, and I was like well chuffed. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I was like, yes, that does you know it does work, and then I'm like thinking right, well Chainlink hasn't really had a really good uh, like momentum break yet, so then like maybe I'm going to take profits and keep on putting it into chain link like that just watching how other traders you know it's just like a real simple way of doing things if you're in a bull run and a certain coin in the top 10 or top 20 hasn't pumped yet well it's time is surely going to come um sooner sooner or later so that's a that's a little strategy i've used and it has worked quite well well what's your thinking with chain link at the moment then because we're, we're talking about chain link and um di different layers things like polka dot yeah um and that last week that the the layer one solutions the layer two solutions that kind of thing so it seems to be growing interest in them again so do you think that's going to make people have an increasing appetite for things like chain link i think i think the nft we discussed this last week but i think the nft money the nft profit like those people that have made money for fnt nfts right they're at the high degree of greed in the market Mm. So are they going to take their profits during a bull run and put it into Bitcoin? I don't think so. They're more likely to put into low cap altcoins and altcoins in the top 20, which haven't pumped so far. So following that logic, I would expect Chainlink. I mean, Chainlink is su such an established brand within the crypto market. I'm not saying it's an established, you know, if, if you're outside of crypto, you just don't know what it does. You don't know its use case, right? But like, it don't, doesn't micro strategy hold a little bit of Chainlink as well? And like, it's, it's, is it MicroStrategy? I'm, I'm not sure on that, because MicroStrategy admitted to, they, they've bought some more Bitcoin recently, haven't they? Yeah, they are big on, so, yeah. I think it might be another another trust anyway, but they're, they're, like, they're just so established in what they do. I mean, they're at the high end of the market. They're quite expensive for what they do, I believe, um, as Fernando was saying. It's just about reputation and, where where they sit and as as a as a like as a function, like and do you know what? Even if you don't know, let's so say you're a complete new newbie and you're just looking at a market and you're looking at the top twenty coins, it's just real simplicity just to play play a game like that. Like like like, like I said said before. So I basically think chain chainlink will have its day, and you've got to look at the upside. Like chainlink is nowhere near its all time high. No, and so surely the room has got to grow by the end of this bull market is much more than like Cardano would have at this point. I mean, so I was just thinking about how much upside have, have, have those coins got, which haven't had a run yet. <laughs> yeah. I, I guess that's the thing. It's, it's about looking for the, the new ones really, isn't it? And mm. seeing, seeing the opportunity. And I, I guess it comes back to the whole thing we were saying before about who really knows that there are pretty few true experts who actually can predict these things correctly. Uh, but there are a lot of opinion makers. Yeah. It, it, it comes back again to you know the number of YouTube channels that you'll see with people looking at charts and uh, demonstrating how good they are at reading charts after the event, mm. uh, which ultimately anyone can do. So yeah, and also the Moon Boys, like they're just the more moonish someone is on YouTube, the less I watch them. <laughs> yeah, I just don't watch them. I just think I'm not I'm not listening to you. The more informational someone is and even-toned, 
they are, the more likely I am I am to watch them. You know, you know what's really weird as well? Like when BitBoy does his daily program, he just he's stupid and immature and he makes all these like big moonish claims. But when he does an individual video about an individual coin, he provides really good information. I'm just like, why you know, when he makes a seven minute video, he doesn't make these stupid well, not as many. He doesn't make all these big stupid like grandiose Texan yeehaw, I've just discovered an oil rig claim, yeah. No. Like, just why, like, why can't you know? He's got the biggest following, and he's got the most influence, and he just doesn't use it in, in the best way, uh, in my opinion. And I've, I've often discussed Coin Bureau that we we often think he's uh, he he's one of one of the best, really. When it guy, comes to, yeah, yeah, guy. I, I like the guy. I, I, I mean, yeah. It, it, whenever he does a video, it's so thorough. He mm. goes through pretty much everything. Yeah, what I've noticed, um, well, especially. This uh, this cycle, anyone who's shilling Bybit, I I straight away I, I had a lot of um, subscribers, uh, different uh, YouTubers since from 2017, and what and they weren't shilling um, Bybit, but I've noticed a lot of in this cycle, a lot of them are shilling Bybit. Um, and as soon as I hear the word, I'm like, no, that's it. I'm sorry, I've lost respect. Yeah. Um, <laughs> What's his name? Who's that British guy? Not guy. Who's? Hang on. Uh, who's the British guy? I can't remember. He few months back he did this uh, challenge, thousand um, dollars to a um, to a million. I yeah. remember. Um, and I respected him. I followed him dearly. But one day he mentioned the whole buy bit. I'm like, okay, no more. Um, to be honest, yeah, I don't. I, I nowadays I try not to take too seriously a lot of YouTubers because um, a lot of them that is copying other YouTubers. Yeah, um, yeah. But I, get I guess there's a, a, a lot of people, as you say, you, it, it's not originality type thing. Um, no, I, I, I guess that's the thing. You, you, it, it's the Me Too brigade, isn't it? <laughs> Most of a Kind of copying type things. Oh. Yeah. The, so, the, the, sorry. No, go ahead. So there's just, I mean, there's just different YouTubers with different things. So actually, Coin Bureau made a video about his favourite YouTubers, and I hadn't followed a single <laughs> single one of them. He said like, he said like, I watch all of these people to make the highest quality videos that I, I can make, and so I, I started to try and follow some of those, but. Some of those were just even duller than he was. So yeah, I, can, I, can I had to say, when I saw that video and I actually subscribed, I think it was about four or five of them. And mm. I thought, you know what, let me subscribe to them just to see how good they are. Mm. They were really monotone and boring. There's no, I don't know. You want a happy medium. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know how he find them so interesting. You need a happy medium. You don't want a moon boy, but you don't want someone like ridiculously dull. But um, I mean, uh, the main two I watch is Satoshi Stacker, and he just keeps me in mind of the support and resistance and the Fibonacci's. So that that's what he does. And then I find Guy uh, Coin Bureau is the best of the market information. So in that way, I feel like I have like the two bases of of uh, technical analysis and market knowledge um, together. But like I do, I do read a lot of Coin um, Coin Telegraph. Mm -hmm. but some of the information on there has been so erroneous like before like i've based my kind of trades on it and i thought oh i better put into stable coins because and it's been completely incorrect <laughs> yeah. so i'll take it with a pinch of salt now i, th I think coin telegraphs it, it kind of goes in peaks and troughs at times as to just mm. how good it is sometimes it's almost as though they're just trying to create a bit of controversy it's, it's almost like a, it's the sun newspaper version of for, yeah. So they're, they're trying to be a little bit sensationalist. They, to give them credit, they, they do tend to be quite good at breaking news. Mm. And I can think what quite useful on that. But some of the stuff, yeah. Their I, price I, I, analysis is awful, I feel. Like, I really don't respect their price analysis, so I think it's been consistently wrong. But you're right about the breaking news, and they do very good art. Got to give them that. Yep. Those little art pictures they do. Wow. <laughs> very good. Very good. Well, I, th I think that, that that's part of their brand isn't it mm. uh, it's that they do whoever the graphic artist is or are 
it, it's, mm. it's a very nice style and it, it's yeah. very um, unique. You can kind of spot it on that stuff. So that's, mm. that's good. I see we just had uh, Jay joined us. Hey, Jay. Well, Hi there. Hey. How's everyone? We're good. We're good. We're just chatting about various things in the crypto world. Been talking about Bitcoin, Ethereum, yeah. Ripple, Chainlink. Trying to think what else we've done. So, yeah. have, have you I been joined. to any of these? Have you been along to any of these sessions before? I did join. I think it was two weeks ago. I believe I joined. Okay. Um, yeah. So, I joined towards the end, though, like the last ten minutes. So. Okay. A bit longer this time. <laughs> Excellent, that's good. Yeah, yeah. Well, we, we just end up talking about whatever, really. Or, yeah. Or we get to watch Sam eating his food. <laughs> yeah. No hungry. Sorry, guys. Uh, it's okay. No, no, it's cool. So, Sam, I was going to ask you with your the way you're strategizing crypto. Do you, are you taking out profits as you go along, or are you just taking them out profits and then putting them into other coins, like you were saying about <clears throat> Chainlink? Hmm. What I'm doing, um, well, originally I just I was like bullish on a couple of coins. I was really bullish on Cardano, mm. and I put quite a lot into that. And I was very bullish on ETH, and I put quite a lot into that. So I'd say they've been my two biggest gainers. But when I was watching Satoshi, he said, "Look, look on on these Fibonacci's." In I'm talking about like this month. Like he just didn't think that there were too many, too there wasn't too much upside for those coins to keep on exposed into once they break their all-time highs, like mm. they'll make a new all-time high, but then look at the coins he's saying, which haven't pumped yet. Look at... Like Chainlink, Chainlink yeah. And look at Polkadot. And Guy, yeah. the coin bureau, he said, look, Polkadot has not um, had, had a big pump yet. So mm. my advice, that's my number one piece of advice to put in. I thought, well, you got the man that makes the best YouTube videos on the internet for <laughs> crypto for me. So I took half of my Cardano and I put into Polkadot and I had a 20% gain. You mean you exchanged it or did you sell? I exchanged it. Oh, okay. I exchanged it. When it comes to taking profit, I've got a bit of a larger risk tolerance because I don't think the bull, the, the bull run is like over by any stretch of the imagination. I'm very confident that we're going to have a lot more upside. But I personally will take quite a chunk of profit when, when Bitcoin gets to 60K. And that's just to prove a point to my wife, to be honest. <laughs> so, <laughs> like, because... I had full confidence when we had that bearish um, trend. I had full confidence that that bull run would continue based, based on Bitcoin super cycles. So I just um, dollar cost averaged in quite a bit of money like every month. And I just live like an absolute monk. And um, I'm feeling a little bit smug on that one because it seems to have paid off. But I'm still waiting for some further upside. But I will take, I think, 60% out of my portfolio when Bitcoin gets to 60K. It's been very conservative, I know, because okay. I think a lot, a lot. I've got, I've got a specific reason for doing that. It's because I promised my wife I'd buy her a car. So anyway, like, with the crypto, but it's it's to prove that you that you can make money out of crypto. But I'm still living forty percent of my portfolio in, and I will have a very, I have quite a larger risk tolerance for that. I'm going to try and ride that. You will never be able to call the top of the market, but I'm going to try and ride it towards the end. I'm going to have my money in all all coins anyway. Because when the Bitcoin super cycle is over, people generally put their money into altcoins, right? To extend further profits. So that seems to be an established behavior. So that's, that's my way of thinking about it at this um, precise moment anyway. Okay. When I understand the super cycle will uh, end. This is very hard to call. Now, this year or is it... Is a... Well, Unfortunately, I have no answers, but I can I can give you three different theses, yeah? Yeah. Three different ideas. One is that it will end at this, the end of this month because of the American crypto um, legislation. The bill, right. Yeah. So that would equate to, could be a, a black swan event. Okay. And putting your money in stable coins may not help because then the, the SEC might go over go after stable coins, okay? Right, especially so te one, uh, Tether, isn't it? Yeah, especially Tether. But don't think you USDC or other stable coins are safe, yeah? Right. So there is a way of getting around that, is that if you just put your money into a wallet, yeah, and then they, they can't... But then you can't... You know, you have to take your money out of crypto at some point. Mm -hmm. The other thesis, the, the one which was, which was just purely based on TA, and a good TA I read on the internet, was that October 27th, that was my original idea, that the, um, the Bitcoin super cycle would end then. So 
I'm just talking about Bitcoin super cycles for now, yeah? Okay, and then Fernando, who's come on here quite a few times, thinks that Bitcoin is aligning with traditional markets. And that Fernando's he, on, I think. Yeah, he's he, just joined. He, he, he yeah. just joined. Well, he's the one that gave me the sterling bit of advice uh, that it's aligned with traditional markets and it would end uh, in December. So those are the three competing theses. So, like... Uh, and there's another one. Governments will continue to print and we'll have a Japanese-style economy over the world where somehow we have very low interest rates and continuing inflation, but somehow it just works. Mm. So those, those right. are the different... These are all the different ideas. Now, which one is going to become a reality? I don't know. But I'm right. personally a little bit conservative and take a chunk of profit in sep by the end of September. Okay, yeah. Well, there we go. So we've, we've got Fernando's joined us, in fact. So, hey, Fernando. Hi, guys. You all right? So, are you, are you, in a, you in another coffee shop somewhere in the world? No, actually, I'm trying to eat something now because <laughs> it was a crazy day today. I just calls, calls, calls. It was incredible. But anyway, it's getting closer to launching my platform, so it is what it is, you know? Yeah. Didn't didn't you say you were going to mention something this week? Mm. I, I see. Yeah, you know, so, last, last week you said I'll share more details with you next week. So, yeah. Um, so basically the, the platform is a, a high-end collectibles uh, art platform, yeah? And NFT is re nft uh, both physical items, yeah? Uh, being um, masterpieces, you know, or or any other collectibles, really, you know, uh, being from car, uh, uh, cars to wine to as long as they fit within the profile. And the profile is very simple. If the collectible or art is worth more than 250K, then we look at it, yeah? Uh, so you can't just go and NFT anything, you know, you have to go through us. And then we, of course, we have art specialists. We have uh, uh, people that will look at it. And if we think it's good for the platform, we go through the process of looking at provenance, authenticity, uh, the usual stuff, you know. Um, we also, uh, in the first phase, we're not going to launch our token. Um, I want to do it properly. already started to, to talk with people in the US so we can get a Delaware company and ensure we are registered with the SEC and get all the American uh, market as well when we actually do that with the token yeah um, I don't want problems later on because this is a very disruptive business for the existing auction houses yeah uh, it's tech it's smart contracts initially uh, because the volumes are going to be so big uh, from the items we're going to list we will um, um, what we will do is have a custodian in Switzerland that will the smart contracts will route every bid for every item straight to the custodian. Uh, they are FINMA regulated, you know, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. So it gives a little bit more of assurance because the smart contracts are being hacked left, right, and center, right? So at this stage, for us quite dangerous. We need to spend months and months in trying to get all the security around it really uh, tight, you know, and then we will uh, uh, provide options, you know, uh, depending on the items. So one of the items that we I secure for the platform, um, I cannot talk because it's it's mind blowing. Yeah, I'm just waiting for DNA analysis. Uh, so I've done I've done carbon analysis. It goes like two thousand years old. I've done the scan and uh, X-ray. All came like wow, you know. Uh, uh, but waiting just for DNA analysis, and that's going to blow people's brains. But seriously, it's just so big. Uh, everything seems to go right. So I'm doing all the stuff that I need to do in terms of DD for these items. And um, But I will tell about that uh, next week, okay? <laughs> what you, we have so far... Uh, you're just giving us teasers each yeah, week, no, aren't you? Just, just a little bit, yeah. I, so, I can give you now a, a big one, yeah? yeah. So I've right. secured for the platform one of the three uh, Leonardo da Vinci's that is in private collections. Yeah. Okay. And we NFTing, and what it means is the winner of the auction 
takes not only the NFT to, to monetize in the virtual worlds, metaverse, whatever you want to do, but you'll take the actual physical uh, Leonardo. Okay, so all the items that we are digitizing that are physical, uh, because they need to go to virtual worlds, and the winners always of those items will have the physical piece. Yeah, and that's totally disruptive, you know, for who. <laughs> mm. So um, I also secured uh, a Basquiat. Uh, the, late, the last bus. I don't know why people want to sell Basquiat, but I would not sell if I had one, you know. And uh, but you know, um, I was approached, and I have all uh, the the documents certifying it is. The experts have ver ver verified and validated, so they're gonna obviously these items will stay on the free port until the action the auction is finished. Yeah, to make sure they are not switched. If you know what I mean, it happens a lot in art. So yeah, um, really exciting. I have plenty of them. I have a uh, the, the Louis Vuitton Dream Car is the only one in the world, you know. Uh, I think the the, the the car is from 1926 or 28, if I if I remember. It was modified throughout the years, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. You know, I have sculptures, well-known sculptures. Uh, I'm just uh, the probably it's going to be a mirror for one of the big art collectors. I have. Uh, uh, uh the, he has a lot yeah but i think he wants to sell a mirror on the velasquez so i'm just going through the, all of them I have a huge list you know but i think i'm going to launch only with between five and ten and today i made an agreement with um the next big platform uh, uh gaming platform play to earn platform they are it's insane they have like six, 60 uh designers um uh, animators that have worked in, uh, for studios and for things like Game of Thrones, uh, uh, Star Wars, you know, Marvel and so on. This gaming platform is going to be huge. And I I made an agreement with the CEO today. So I'm just waiting for him to sign and send it back where they're going to provide 10 of the, the top hand uh, NFT cards that they're going to provide on the game is going to be auctioned as well on the platform. All sound like good stuff. So it's kind of interesting for my my ears pricked up when you're talking about DNA analysis and um, <laughs> checking. I know you it, no, it's it more because of the fact you said two thousand years. Mm. Because I was thinking, oh, is this the Ark of the Covenants or yeah. Noah's Ark? <laughs> yeah, the Shroud of Turin. Or I was thinking, have you found the DNA of Jesus? You know, like. <laughs> <where's my back? laughs> so it's one of those things. That it, it's it's clearly. What what you actually describe what it actually is is brilliant. I was almost like, the, oh wow, that sounds phenomenal. Oh, it's just a Da Vinci. It's, got, look, <laughs> it's so big that uh, it's gonna change perception of religion, the humanity, uh, you know, the, the government's place in the world is really really big, you know. So that's why I have to be careful. Okay. Just wait for the, 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 the there was already a DNA analysis made in the US. Uh, but um, I said, hmm, I need to have from uh, France, Germany, UK, or Switzerland. Believe it or not, majority of people that approach, even to do the X, we know they approach, yeah, to do the DNA and the X-ray, they scared, really scared, and they refused to do it. Okay. You know? But uh, everything will be announced soon, and you guys will understand what I mean, you know. Excellent. Um, and this is just at the point at which we've got the grand reset or the great reset, the fourth industrial revolution, complete collapse of the existing financial world. But we know Fernando. So we, 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 are, we, are, we are saved. Yeah, so. well, well, being serious, look, I look forward to hearing a little bit more next week. If, if you can share more next week, get, keep it coming through. That's really, really good. So thanks, for Fernando. I just wanted to um, ask, with it just being 10 minutes left, with a few different people being on the call today, does anyone have any questions or comments, any, anything that they'd like to raise in any way? Yeah, I wanted to ask. Um, I'm still understanding the whole NFT scope, so I'm kind of new to it, so forgive me if, I, if I'm coming incorrect or anything but so from what i understood fernando you basically are tokenizing physical items and you'll have a platform where uh, you can auction it off and people can then obtain the item 
the actual physical item as well as the token to represent them being the digital owner of that item. Is that correct? Not only the token, the actual NFT image or 3D animation, because uh, many people do not understand the end game of NFTs. Uh, they still don't. Even though I spoke so many times in conferences about this, uh, the end of game for NFTs, and this is what some of the big investors are looking at, is uh, to make these NFTs available on, on uh, virtual worlds. Yeah, uh, the, the developments going on in virtual worlds uh, uh, th that is the, the, what makes the metaverse that you, you usually hear so much. Yeah, is really about then listing those items. So think about um, monetizing a NFT that you have, you know, and put it somewhere uh, like a museum, for example, virtual museum. I mean, there's so many things being developed at the moment. We're talking about people are thinking ahead, you know, of everyone else. Of course, um, uh, the majority is just buying NFTs and flip it just to make a buck. It's just investment, you know, but the end game really of NFTs when they are things like this is about looking ahead, you know. So, and you need to be careful when you say tokenizing because, yeah, you're creating an NFT. It's a token. Tokenizing is different, uh, which I'm totally against. When you tokenize something, you're splitting in multiple parts, you know, and that's not uh, uh, non-fungible anymore. It's fungible, you know, and so it, it's not an NFT anymore. So we need to be very careful when you say tokenizing yeah, uh, art. What, that's very different. what become? Oh, so how do you? Um, what's the correct way of? If it's going to be non-fungible, what would you say rather than tokenizing it? Uh, NFT. <laughs> oh, okay. So you would just say NFT in that sense. Okay. Correct. So I've looked by at owning, one. By owning that NFT, yeah, which is an image, the image of the, 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 the picture, for example, yeah, of the actual masterpiece, mm -hmm. then, you know, you actually own because it's on chain that you bought it for, I don't know, $300 million, yeah? Mm -hmm. uh, do, that you actually own as well the physical piece. Like, so it could be actually sort of a, a certificate of ownership because the ownership certificate will be there. Yeah. Yeah. I've looked at, um, okay, that's a, that makes a lot of sense because I've looked at, you basically made me think about, for instance, Sandbox. I've looked at Sandbox, the NFT game. So in theory, you could, let's say, own the Da Vinci physical but also upload it to the metaverse the sandbox game and let's say you own land you can actually display it in the in your home in your metaverse for instance the actual piece of art have i understood that correctly yeah i mean it's up to you how you want to then use the nft you know mm -hmm. you own it. so it depends then on the platforms how they they're going to allow you to make available that nft yeah on their platform there's plenty of it i mean uh metaverse the guy, which is the guy behind MetaPurse, is uh, Meta Kovan, the guy who bought Beeple for $69 million. Yeah, they are mm -hmm. investing so much. They're going to do a conference. They invited me to come to that conference at the end of October. Well, I can't remember if it's mid October or end of October uh, in New York. And they're doing some really big events, NFT events, you know. And they're going to, for the first time, I think somebody's going to really showcase what is that <laughs> going to look like in the future, you know. Yeah. What's the name of that conference? Sorry, guys. I just I, I, I can't remember. It's on the computer. You know? Okay. All right. Thank you. I, I, I think I've seen a, a, a note on that. And Sam's got his, I'm guessing it's his daughter. <laughs> yeah, my daughter. She is very uh, rambunctious. So she needs to leave me alone. She... Go away. <laughs> I'm doing my crypto meets. Um, yeah, come, anyway. All right. Sorry. Sorry. I was, I was talking of tokens. Please, Izzy, can you shut the door? Thank you. Um, talking of tokens, um, I got my World Mobile tokens. Ah. Um, so I, I purchased. Yeah, I purchased. Thank you. So I, I purchased them and got them on my Yoroi uh, wallet. And they come. It's a really poor user experience the way you get them, because they they, they actually gave me one point five ADA for free. Thank you. So I could receive uh, my World Mobile token, but when it comes in your wallet, it doesn't doesn't appear like just you have this much World Mobile token. You have to then go to send for it to appear so that you know you've got it. It's really, really mm -hmm. odd. It's a really odd user experience. I didn't think it was the, I didn't think it was the best. So. It is a Cardano, Cardano token? It is, it's, it's, a, it's a token which will work on the 
Cardano blockchain is is World Mobile, which um, you, you suggested. Yeah. Uh, but it's not yet. Yeah, it's not uh, Ethereum or Binance chain, yeah. No, it, it, it is on the Cardano chain, isn't it? Oh, okay. Yeah, it, it, it will be, but obviously Cardano smart contracts haven't gone live yet. So I've been looking at the value of the token, and it's really low <laughs> at this present at this present point. But obviously, I wouldn't expect the price action to be very high until the, uh, the blockchain is even functioning. And I'm planning to hold it for quite a long time anyway. So, so very quickly, because we've only got a minute left, but that is really interesting because if, if they've done effectively a pre-sale and then a sale, um, and there isn't a production platform for them to now put those live onto, which presumably means it can't go onto any exchanges as well. So it's almost beginning to feel a little bit like a one coin experience. <laughs> Okay, but maybe maybe we'll see where that one goes. I mean, it, it it sounds like a really incredible project. Well, you know, you could say that you know Cardano for how many years already? Four years, yeah, <laughs> and there's nothing yet. So, well, well, twelfth September is the big day. Twelfth of September. Well, did, <laughs> didn't they do a test? And Charles Hoskinson's just done a video. Um, explaining why it was that the, the test proved that was a problem in some way. I've something. been playing V1, careful. Okay. You know what happens, to Gary, you've been in tech for a long time like I have. Yeah, yeah, yeah no, <laughs> no, never trust the 1.0 version. Yeah. That's right. Look, guys, just realize that time has leapt ahead of us. So, you know, I was going to say, that, you know, thank you, everyone who's come along and joined us today. Um, I have a question very quickly. Did anybody got some Star Atlas? Yeah. Some what? Star Atlas. No. No. Uh, no. I didn't. You know, it gave 600x. It's oh. a play to, play to earn game. That's the big thing at the moment. Play to earn games, you know. 600x. Okay. Incredible. You know? Mm -hmm. Anyway. Good. Okay. So, guys, th th thank you for joining us. Uh, thanks for contributions. Hope everyone found it worthwhile, interesting, blah, 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 blah. Um, be safe. Go and wash your hands. Yes. Uh, ha have a great day, folks. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, bye now. Yeah, bye. Bye. bye.